Hello. In this video, we are going to introduce a random variable that can be used to model the random amount of time that we have to wait before an event occurs. The type of random variable that we are going to introduce is what is known as an exponential random variable. And by the end of the video, you should be able to write out the probability density and cumulative probability distribution functions for this type of random variable. In addition, we are going to show that the exponential random variable has no memory, and you should thus be able to explain what it means when we state that a random variable has no memory. Without further ado then, let's get on to the content of the video. We want to ask the question posed on this slide. Imagine we are waiting for something to happen. This thing happens at a time in the future that is random, what would we use as the cumulative probability distribution function for this type of random variable? There are a few things that we can note about the random variable that we need to generate immediately. First of all, the random variable must be a continuous random variable, as time is expressed using a real number. In other words, time is infinitely divisible. The second thing that is obvious about this random variable is that the probability that capital T is less than or equal to zero must be zero, as if T were negative, the event would have happened before we started waiting, which would mean that we wouldn't have to wait for it. The last thing we need is that in the limit as T tends to plus infinity, the probability that capital T is less than or equal to small t must equal 1. In other words, the event has to be guaranteed to occur in the future. We cannot develop a model for the time it would take for an event to occur if that event might not occur, as that concept makes no sense. Furthermore, this property that in the limit as small t tends to infinity, the prob probability that capital T is less than or equal to small t is equal to 1 is one of the three properties of the cumulative probability distribution that we said all random variables must have. A simple function that satisfies the three properties given on this slide is shown here. If p of capital T less than or equal to t is equal to 1 minus e to the minus lambda t for all non-negative values of small t, then p less than the probability that t is less than or equal to t has the three properties that we require. This is obviously a continuous function. When t is equal to 0, e to the minus lambda t is equal to 0, and thus p of t less than or equal to t is equal to to 1. Lastly, in the limit as t tends to infinity, e to the minus lambda t tends to 0, and thus the probability that capital T is less than or equal to small t tends to 1. Also note that for all small t less than 0, the probability that capital T is less than or equal to small t is equal to 0, precisely because if this were not the case, there would be no need to wait for the event to occur. The event would have occurred in the past. The expression that we have just written down for the probability that capital T is less than or equal to small t is a statement for the cumulative probability distribution function for an exponential random variable. There are a number of other important results that can be easily derived for this, from this statement. For example, the probability that the exponential random variable, capital T, is greater than small t, is 1 minus the cumulative probability distribution function evaluated at small t. The probability that capital T is greater than small t is thus given by the following expression. Similarly, the probability density function for the random variable is equal to the first derivative of the cumulative probability distribution function with respect to small t. When we compute this relatively straightforward first derivative, we thus find that the probability density function for the exponential random variable is given by the expression shown here.
You are perhaps wondering why we are using such a complicated function to model the time until the event occurs, when we could have used a much simpler function. For example, why not simply make the time until the event a uniform continuous random variable, which is a much more straightforward function to understand? The answer is that the exponential random variable has an appealing property. It has no memory. To understand what this means, suppose that we have the timeline shown here, and that we were and that we were still waiting at the point on the time axis that I have highlighted here. In other words, we started waiting at time t equals 0, and at this later time, t equals s, we are still waiting. Does the fact that we have waited all this time make it more likely that we will observe the event in these later time windows? We are inclined to believe that it's more likely, as we have seen that the likelihood of the event not occurring decays exponentially in time. We will see, however, that this intuition, based on the shape of the function, is wrong. The reason it is wrong is connected to the fact that the probability we want to calculate here is not an absolute probability. It is instead a conditional probability. We are calculating the probability that the event will happen in the second time period, given that it did not happen in the first. We can thus write the conditional probability we want to calculate as the probability that t is greater than s plus h, given that t is greater than s. We know from the definition of conditional probability that the probability that t is greater than s plus h given t is greater than s is equal to the probability that t is greater than s plus h and t is greater than s divided by the probability that t is greater than s. Furthermore, if t is greater than s plus h, it stands to reason that it is greater than s. So this is simply the probability that t is greater than s plus h divided by the probability that t is greater than s. We can calculate both the numerator and the denominator in this expression by using the expression we have just derived for the probability the event does not occur by time t, namely that the probability that t is greater than small t is equal to e to the minus lambda t. Inserting t equals sh into this expression gives us the probability in the numerator, while inserting t equals s into the expression gives us the probability in the denominator. We thus have that the probability is given by the following quotient of exponentials. We can simplify this expression by recalling that we can write an exponent of a sum as a product of exponents. The numerator here is thus equal to e to the minus lambda s times e to the minus lambda h. There is now a factor of e to the minus lambda s in the numerator and the denominator, and these two terms cancel. We thus find that our conditional probability is equal to e to the minus lambda h. In other words, the conditional probability that the event does not happen in the h seconds after a first s seconds have elapsed with no arrival is identical that the probability to the probability that the event does not happen during the first h seconds. In other words, the fact that we have waited s seconds does not affect how long we will subsequently have to wait. This property, which we have just arrived at, is an important property of the exponentially distributed random variable. As already mentioned when talking about this property, we say that the exponentially distributed random variable has no memory. Furthermore, the exponentially distributed random variable is the only random variable that has this property. In essence, in this case, the random variable's lack of memory ensures that the fact that you've already waited c seconds for an event to occur has no effect on the amount of time that you will subsequently have to wait. This concludes our brief survey of the exponential random variable. 
As I stated at the start, you should now be able to write the expression for the cumulative probability distribution function for this type of random variable that is shown here. In addition, you should be able to derive an expression for the, Q for the probability density function from this expression. You should also be able to explain what it means when we state that this type of random variable has no memory. If you are unable to do any of these things, then have another view of this video and see if you can work them out on a second pass through the material. Thank you for your attention.